Hey world, Dan Brown here with another episode of Wombo Storm. It's the craziest show about the craziest format of Magic the Gathering known as Elder Dragon Highlander, a.k.a. Commander. It's a show about Commander. That's why it says it in the lower right-hand corner right here. We got an email. Hey, Dan, this is Caleb Evans from the YouTubes. Just wanted to send you an idea for one of your Wombo Storm videos. I used to have a Marquesa the Black Rose Commander deck. Still do. It's my favorite deck. It's just changed. I had a lot of the manifest mechanic in that deck. It's an interesting idea with Marquesa due to the fact that no matter what is manifested, it'll come back if it's got a plus one, plus one counter on it, barring instances of sorceries. Good way to cheat Planeswalkers, lands, enchantments, and other awesome permanents. Now, I never found a way to really take advantage of this mechanic as my deck moved into a different direction. Just wanted to suggest that to you. You could use Marquesa as the commander or just have her in the deck. The choice is yours. Thank you for your time. Have fun brewing. Oh. I did have fun brewing. Thank you for the idea. Here's Marquesa the Black Rose. She's a 3-3 three, three for 4 mana, has Dethrone. Other creatures you control have Dethrone, and whenever a creature you control with a plus 1, plus 1 counter on it dies, return that card to the battlefield under your control at the beginning of the next end step. She is a great Grixis commander. That's blue, black, red. And uh, Manifest Mechanics come from the uh, Tarkir block, relatively new. I think most of you are probably familiar with this. Kind of a foil to morph. Uh, what you do is you take the top card of your library, put it face down on the battlefield as a 2-2 creature, and if it's a creature, you can turn it face up at any time for its mana cost. But Marquesa lets us get around that and get even things that aren't quite creatures onto the battlefield. These are a couple examples, representative examples of the uh, sort of manifest things that we're going to be doing. But the real question here is what sort of bombs? That's like the, start, the starting point, right, is what bombs are we going to be sneaking into play? with Marquesa. And I recommend going to scryfall.com slash advanced. They recently acquired magiccards.info and I gotta say I was nervous because I loved magiccards.info. I thought they were gonna ruin it. Well, I didn't think they were gonna ruin it. I was just concerned that they might ruin it, but they didn't ruin it. It is still great. It's even better actually. Uh, and what we're gonna plug into their advanced search is anything with the color identity, blue, black, red. The criteria is it has to be a permanent and we're going to be sorting by converted mana cost descending. That's going to return a result that looks like some of the biggest, scariest, bombiest, and often not uh, legal in any constructed format because they're from unhinged slash unglued <laughs> sets. But uh, yeah, those are just a lot of big, scary things, right? A good starting point for uh, th th things that we might want to cheat into play. Worth noting here, though, we can't use anything that uh, has this little bit of text when it's put into a graveyard from anywhere its owner shuffles his or her graveyard into his or her library even though when this is a face down object on the battlefield it doesn't like have that text when it hits the graveyard as soon as it hits the graveyard like nothing in the graveyard is face down right that text is still on that that trigger will still go on the stack and therefore we won't be able to cheat these things like blightsteel colossus and ulamog into play off of marquesa bit of a bummer but that's okay. So here are some options of things that don't have that clause that are just enormous bombs that might generate some crazy advantage. And my first pass at building this deck did run all three of these. I didn't wind up going with this, but if you wanted to go in a more punchy battle cruiser sort of direction, it that betrays Jingataxis, Archfiend of Despair, just ridiculous value if you can get it out kind of mid-game, even early game with enough mana acceleration. Jingataxis in particular is just, <laughs> I mean, that just, that might end the game right there. Opponents might scoop if they have to discard their whole hand, and meanwhile you're drawing seven extra cards at the end of the turn um, after that comes into play. Uh, but no, no, head and shoulders above the rest of the permanents that we could choose from that are big crazy bombs after doing that scryfall search is omniscience. You may cast spells from your hand without paying their mana costs. Everything is free. This thing is not, though. It costs 10 mana, so getting it into play off of Marquesa seems juicy, seems like fun. That's why the deck's called Omniscient Marquesa, and the basic game plan looks a little bit like this. We're going to try to enter the infinite after dropping that Omniscience, cheated it into play off of Marquesa, and then... We will leave a Sensei's Divining Top in our library, and Beacon of Tomorrows, along with the rest of our library, will be in our hand. We will cast the Beacon of Tomorrows to take an extra turn. It will get shuffled back in with the Sensei's Divining Top, and at that point, it doesn't matter whether we draw the Beacon or the Top. We'll just cast whichever one it is. If it is the Top, cast the Top, then draw the Beacon, then put the Top back on top, and just repeat. And that is infinite turns with 
omniscience. Also, we have Ulamog in there for inevitability, because <laughs> once you have infinite turns, I guess you need some way to actually do the final points of damage and or mill your opponents out, whichever happens quicker. Also have Dream Halls in there as kind of a backup for Omniscience in case it gets dealt with or countered. And, you know, I, this is a kind of funky problem that I've run into when I'm trying to build like a hyper-specific Wombo Stormy Rube Goldberg machine of a deck. Like, when you support a hyper specific idea properly sometimes part of that support just winds up being a better game plan in the first place full disclosure i think you might win more games or get there quicker if instead of trying to cheat in an omniscience with marquesa you're just trying to tutor up a uh, dream halls and then cast and enter the infinite off of the dream halls might be faster might be better and you might m want to consider the marquesa omniscience plan more of a backup plan but you don't have to do it that way like if, if you, you keep in mind that the real metagame the re sorry, the real game is the meta game, and the real win condition is having the most fun. And you're just trying to impress your friends with your crazy, janky Marquesa omniscience build. Then you know this can be your backup. I mean, th this was put in there as a backup, but as I think about it and play test more and more, I'm like, maybe this is actually Plan A. Uh, hey, Dream Halls is in the deck. We have 14 mana rocks. Heavy emphasis on two mana mana rocks that enter untapped. I love those. We're not in green, so we're going to lean heavily on those. We have 13. Teen tutors. That is a high number of tutors because we're trying to put together a kind of like hyper specific weird jalopy of a board state to do what it is that we're ultimately trying to do. And all of the tutors that I've featured here uh, affect the top deck, right? Insidious Dreams, additional cost, discard X cards, then search your library for X cards and put them on top in any order. Cruel Tutor puts it on top, Vampiric Tutor puts it on top, Limb Duel's Vault uh, lets you, you know, put the top five in any order that you want after digging for exactly the five that you want if you own an imperial seal you can also put it into the deck but i chose not to put it in this just because i mean there's no upper bound on the price of cards that i'm putting in these decks except i felt like you know five hundred dollars seemed like too much for one card or whatever it is that that card costs at this point it's just kind of ridiculous uh five top deck manipulators brainstorm and scroll rack are really good in case omniscience somehow gets stuck in your hand and you need to put it back on top in order to manifest it and cryptic annelid is just a cool card that i found while searching for potential ways to scry a little bit deep into the deck uh when it enters the battlefield scry one then scry two then scry three i mean it would be quicker to get to the combo if you just like cast a vampiric tutor and put the omniscience right on top but the cryptic analyd maybe has a little more play a little bit deeper into the game if your first pass at getting this combo off gets dealt with somehow cryptic analyd you can uh you know put on a bit of a ferris wheel of death with Marquesa, put it into play, attack with it, get a counter, sacrifice it, bring it back, get that trigger all over again. Uh, and, you know, maybe if the game goes longer than you, the combo player, wants it to be going, uh, Cryptic Analyd still gives you a little bit of agency, uh, even if your first pass didn't quite work. Uh, then we have seven Manifestors. Just generic good stuff, ways to manifest in these colors. There aren't that many, right? This has only been a mechanic in the uh, Khans of Tarkir block. Well, oh, and I guess like in the most recent Commander set, they made Primordial Mist and made a couple of uh, manifest synergies there. So these are good. I mean, they're just kind of mana efficient ways to manifest the top card of our library after we've already set that up. We have five sack outlets. Obviously, once we have a manifested omniscience with a plus one plus one counter on it with Marquesa in play, we need a way to get it in the graveyard to make Marquesa's trigger go off. That's that hyper-specific jalopy that I was talking about. Three wheel effects. I don't run any real like card draw other than these in the deck. The idea is that as soon as omniscience is online, we want to be able to win off of it like right then and right there and if you're down to just like one or two cards in hand if one of them's a wheel that's a really good way to just refill everything hopefully hit a tutor to hit the enter the infinite to hit your combo uh so three tutors there's three wheels rather i have two shoes lightning greaves and swift foot boots although in parentheses four i mean really this is four shoes the swift foot boots is two shoes and the lightning greaves is two shoes in and of itself <laughs> It's a way to grant haste and protection, both to Omniscience and to Marquesa. Uh, very important things to do in this deck. I mean, if you can swing, you don't have to do that. Like, But if you draw into it, it's not a bad thing to have. And then two like miscellaneous value cards, Temporal Mastery and Unspeakable Symbol. Uh, Temporal Mastery goes in 
every deck that I play that has Vampiric Tutor and Mystical Tutor in it, which is so far all of the decks featured in Wombo Storm, just because those sorts of tutors are very good for consistency when you're getting your Rube Goldberg Machine Wombo combo online. So Temporal Mastery is just too good to pass up. And Unspeakable Symbol synergizes really, really well with Marquesa. It can get around... If your Omniscience has Summoning Sickness and can't attack right away, you can just put the counter directly on it and then sacrifice it and maybe get your combo off a turn earlier. Or, like I was talking earlier, that Ferris Wheel of Death with the Cryptic Analyt. It's just a way to grease the gears, help that happen more consistently, more quickly. Even in this weird Marquesa build, signature Marquesa card belongs in it. Uh, and then we have five control effects. Uh, and... You'll notice these counter spells, Delay, Dispel, Swan Song, um, they're meant to just be really, really cheap mana wise to protect our combos. We're not really interacting with our opponent's boards too often. Hopefully, we are the first player at the table to be attempting to win. And then when our opponents inevitably try to disrupt that, we just disrupt their disruption with Dispel or Swan Song or a delay. We don't care if we give the spell suspend and then it comes back later because we're only delaying a counter spell. And even if that counter spell tries to resolve multiple turns later, it won't have a legal target. And you won't even get that far because hopefully you'll have comboed off and won the game already at that point. Leave a comment below or send me an email, danbrownuniverse at gmail.com, with any ideas that you may have for future episodes of Wombo Storm, of just interesting card synergies or interesting ideas of things you can do with a particular commander, or just like a card that you think is really cool that you'd love to see my take on a deck built with that as like the main idea. Anyway, this, uh, this, this, is, gold, this is Goldfish. I'll show, I'll show you this deck. There's also a link in the description to the full deck list on Tapped Out uh, if you want to check that out. But let's let's see let's see a typical game with Omniscient Marquesa. Great. Shuffle, 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 shuffle. Draw our opening hand. Has some tutors. Has some lands. What more does the Dan need? Not too much. Just gonna order this so I can make a little better sense of it. Yeah, that's a lot of lands. But one of them is a high market, which is already a sack outlet, which is something. That we're looking for as part of our uh, Wombo Stormy Jalopy. You know, I, I, in a perfect world, we'd have probably two fewer lands and, you know, two more better cards. <laughs> two more tutors, I guess. But uh, we'll, we'll see where this goes. Uh, draw another land, main phase. Well, uh, we're going to play the Scry Land and hopefully get anything we don't need out of the way. Ah, Mana Rock. Do we want a Mana Rock right now? Kind of. We kind of do, actually. That'll help us get there faster. I'm going to leave that on top. We're going to go to turn two, untap, draw, main phase. And quick note on these scry lands. I'm running them because they're kind of cute. Um, you know, they help us manipulate the top of our deck a little bit. Maybe, just maybe, they'll help us know that an omniscience is there in a perfect world or a dream halls or something and cheat it into play. Uh, I also run bounce lands because of their interaction with these scry lands maybe in a vacuum it would be better to just run like basics or something anything that doesn't enter tapped but uh you know for the sake of showing uh, cool ways to use somewhat obscure cards um i don't hate running uh temples and bounce lands in here i'll go play a blue source and then for two um i'll drop a prismatic lens move on to turn three untap draw altar of dementia well so now we have kind of redundancy in terms of a sack outlet i think what we really want to do right now um yeah is play dual land here bad lands and then for one two three four we'll go ahead and drop marquesa have to do it at some point why not right now hopefully no one sees there's too big of a threat turn four untap we will draw another land but it's not the end of the world it's fine we have potentially five mana at our disposal. We could just drop a high market. What we need um, is a way to manifest. Uh, and normally we draw into those naturally because we have like seven in the deck, I think. But uh, you know, in this situation, uh, I think we will increase our ambition. Drop an island, one, two, three, four, five. Increasing ambition. I mean, technically the right thing is to probably drop the blue to Delta, crack it, thin out our deck a little bit, but who has time for that? I cast Increasing Ambition and Snag. What's the most mana-efficient way to manifest? Oh, I don't know. Uh, give me just one sec. I, I like right into being. I think this one's fine. Yeah, go ahead and snag that. Put that in our hand. Right into being. Just costs three mana. Let's us manifest. Uh, go to turn five. Untap. Draw. Another land. Plenty of lands. Uh, so we can drop High Market as 
a sack outlet, and then we can, for one, two, three, cast a Cruel Tutor, search our library for a card, if NF3 will be an omniscient so they don't have to reveal it. We'll put that on top of it, Cruel Tutor, our graveyard, and then for three mana, we will write into being, we'll look at the top two cards. What could they be? Enter. Oh, a land and an omniscience. Let's go ahead and manifest the omniscience. Why not? And then we'll put the city of brass on the bottom of our library. We do not need that next turn. Yada, yada. Um, we will make this 2-2. Two, two. It is manifested. And we'll move on to turn six. Untap. Draw a mana rock. Play a land for turn. And I guess we'll move to combat. We will attack. We will get a counter on this from Marquesa because we'll be attacking the player with the highest life total. Hopefully that's not us. That would be awkward. Then during our second main phase, we will do nothing. And we will wait until the end of the second main phase of the turn before ours <laughs> to... Crack our high market, sacrifice our omniscience, get a Marquesa trigger. Omniscience will come back into play on that end step. And then we will take our turn and hopefully draw into something juicy. It's a mana rock. Um, so we're in a holding pattern now. Uh, normally we'd like to be sitting on more tutors than uh, lands. But uh, I'll crack a polluted delta. Should have done that a while ago. Thin out my deck, increase the likelihood that I draw a tutor, but I didn't do that. So, you know, what you gonna do? Let's go ahead and grab an underground seat. Seems good to me. And for one, two, one, two, drop two mana rocks. Get those in play. Why not? And now, you know, let's go, let's go next turn. Let's go to turn seven, see if we draw anything this turn. Draw. Hey, there it is. Cast a diabolic tutor off of omniscience. We will search our library for an Enter the Infinite, wherever that may be. Do, 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 do. Bear with me for a second. Where is it? Where is it? All this blue art featuring Jace looks the same. There's Enter the Infinite. Put that in our hand. We'll go ahead and cast it. Our whole... I'm not actually going to put my whole library in my hand because that is uh, difficult to deal with. But let's say that this stack here then becomes... Uh, the, uh, the, the, let's, let's say that that is now the library. Oh, I forget that it glitches out every time I do that. So let's go ahead and one more time. All right, there we go, there we go. So what we need, again, like I walked through earlier. Let's see, can I remember? I do remember, I remember. It's going to be Bacon of Tomorrows and Sensei's Divining Top, right? The Sensei's Divining Top is in our library and then Bacon of Tomorrows along with all of the rest of the cards here is in our hand. We'll go ahead and cast the Bacon of Tomorrows and then shuffle it in with the Sensei's top. We will also cast Ulamog, wherever Ulamog happens to be. Checking, checking, checking. There's Ulamog. Ulamog is in play. And then Bacon of Tomorrows got us an extra turn. We'll move to that extra turn. Then we will draw either the Sensei's top or the Bacon. If we draw the Sensei's top, we'll just play it because of Omniscience and then we'll crack it to draw the Bacon and then put top back on top. And then we'll cast that. We have infinite turns, and we have Ulamog, and Omniscience, and uh, that's that's how we try to win games with this deck. Uh, look, you know, this is this is like a third pass. If you play test this, I mean, also what is good to put in this deck is going to be different depending on what your meta game is like. Yeah, it's it's a it's a little more than a starting point. I have put some hours into. Um, you know, trying to optimize it. But if you are inspired by this, if you think this seems cool, you could probably make it better. And if you do, I'd love it if you left a comment below with a link to a tapped out deck list or just like explain to me what you did or what you think you might be able to do to make this deck a little bit more consistent. But you know, turn seven, going off, we were in top deck mode a little bit waiting for a tutor to hit the enter the infinite, but we did get there because we run, you know, like 13 tutors. So anyway, that's the deck. That's... That's a, that's a little taste of what this deck does. My name is Dan Brown. This has been Wombo Storm, the craziest show about the craziest format known as Elder Dragon Highlander, a.k.a. Commander. Remember, the real game is the meta game, and the real can win condition is having the most fun. Give your mom a call next time you have a chance. She would love to hear from you. Okay, until next week, I'm Dean Beasy, the Bruzy Brewer. Forever break, break. Forever break, break. I'm having a stroke. <laughs>